Hey everybody, this is Tom with The Board Gamer. Today, we have a relaxing but visually appealing game. We will build a garden while giving and receiving a helping hand from our neighbors. We can choose to compete to have the most beautiful garden or all work together to create a series of awe-inspiring gardens and win medals as a team. Either way we choose to play, our efforts will surely Flourish. Flourish is a 1-7 to seven player game for ages 8 and up, with an average gameplay length of 20 minutes, published by Starling Games. In Flourish, each player will play simultaneously to build a beautiful garden. You will play one card at a time until you have three cards in front of you, ending the round. Score for the round, and do the same for the next two rounds. In the fourth round, play three cards at once, score for the round, then proceed to end game scoring, and the player with the most points wins. To set up the game, each player will receive a scoreboard set at zero and a scoring reference card. Then place a wall between each player, shuffle the deck, and deal six cards to each player and place the deck in the middle of the table. And that completes the setup. Now before we begin, you can choose to play competitively or cooperatively. Yeah. The gameplay is the same, except at the end of the game everyone will add their scores together and determine which medal they have won. Once decided, each player will choose one card to play and put it face down in front of them and then choose two cards from their hand and place one on the opposite side of the wall next to them for their neighbors to collect. Once all players have played their cards and placed cards for their neighbors, all players will simultaneously flip their card face up. Then all players will collect the cards on their side of the walls given to them by their neighbors and draw one new card from the main deck to have a total of six cards back in their hand. Do this two more times until you have three cards laid out in front of you. This signifies the end of the round, and now we will score for end of round points. The only thing that will score is what's listed at the top of the card here, and how it's scored is listed on the reference scorecard. We will go over right now. If you have a number next to a symbol, you will score that many points per symbol in your garden. In the first round, we will only be counting the cards in play, but in future rounds, the plant symbols from past rounds will get scored as well. If you have multiple numbers and symbols, you can score both. If there is a line between them, you may choose only one to score. But if you have a couple gardeners with a line dividing them, you will score the plant symbols in one of your neighbor's gardens instead of your own. And if you have the greater than or equal to symbol with the gardeners divided, you can choose a neighbor to challenge. And if you have more than or equal to the plant symbol listed, you will gain that number of points. If the and symbol is between the gardeners, you must have more than or equal to the plant symbols than both of your neighbors. In order to score this way, you must at least have one of the plant symbols you are comparing in your garden. With the round being scored, move on to the next round. Play it the same way as the previous round, and once all three cards have been laid, score for the end of the round once more. This time, score only the cards played this round. However, the plant symbols on the cards played previously will be added when calculating the round. Upon completing the score for the round, play a third round the same way. However, after laying down your third card and collecting the cards from your neighbors, do not draw a new card. You should have five cards in hand. Score for the round. And now for the fourth and final round, you will play three cards from your hand at once.
place them face down and discard your last two cards. Once everyone is ready, flip over the cards and score for the round. Once final round scoring has ended, move on to the end of game scoring. What is scored will be displayed in the bottom right of the cards you have played. Go through them one by one and score them according to the back of your scoring reference card. If you have a number with any tile next to it, it is scored that many points per tile of that type that are on the left of the cards in your garden. If you have a tile with a plant symbol on it, score that many points for every matching tile with the matching plant symbol. If you have 9 with an arrow, you score 9 points provided you have at least one of that type of tile. If you have a 9 with multiple tiles, you must have at least that many tiles to score these points. You can score another 9 points if you have a tile requesting at least 5 of a single plant icon. And finally, you can also come across a request for at least one of each plant icon for another 9 points. Some of the endgame points can contain things we have covered for in the end of round scoring and they will be scored the same way. Finally, you may come across two wild types. The blank tile lets you score one point for each of a single tile you wish to score. And the Rosa Alba card has five symbols on it. It counts as only one symbol when scoring. However, you can use it multiple times for different symbols. It also counts as one when comparing for majority. Once all scores are tallied, the player with the most points wins. If you have the Signature Edition, you will have the two mini expansions, Friends and Follies. To add these is very simple. The gameplay stays the same with just a couple minor tweaks. With the Friends expansion, you will shuffle and deal two friend cards to each player. They will keep them secret till the end of the game and choose one to play and score during the end game scoring and discard the other. The way they are scored is four to five points for matching tiles, three points for each pair of matching plant symbols, and four to five points for each set of three matching plant symbols. And that is how you play with the Friends expansion. For the Follies, during setup, you will give each player one of each type of Folly. Follies are scored at the end of the game. At the end of each of the first three rounds, you can only place one Folly per card, and you can only place a Folly on a card you played this round. On the fourth and final round, when you play your three cards at once, Instead of playing them in a row, you can place them around your previously played cards. The Follies provide two points for each matching plant symbol for the card they are on and any adjacent cards and three points for any adjacent cards with no color symbols such as walls, lawns, and features. However, at the end of the game, any leftover Follies subtract five points from your final score. And that is how you play with the Follies expansion in Flourish. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.